It's new product time. New, new, new. No, do, do, no, do, no, there's a trumpet going on. You just yeah, sing along with a trumpet. Okay. All right. Hey, you're no fun. <laughs> I'm okay. tired. Okay, let's start. Ready? Yeah. Set, go. Okay. Heat sink tape. This is actually an awesome photo. This is like one of the best product photos we have. I love it because you can see the, the tape peeling off. So we have these heat sinks. We get more heat sinks. And uh, these heat sinks are great for... Uh, you know, motor drivers, microcontrollers that are just doing a lot, uh, microprocessors, whatever. Problem is, how do you get that heat sink onto your chip? Uh, well, big chips have like, you know, you use heat sink paste or whatever, thermal paste, and then you have a clamp or something if you've ever built your own like PC. But with these little guys, uh, you can't really do that. So instead, what you do is you use this thin, uh, electrically Con, uh, non-conductive but thermally conductive tape. It's basically like the thermal epoxy, but it's a very thin plastic. So it's sheet like a it. sheet of thermal epoxy. Yeah, okay. it's a, basically, go it's, not, it's not gooey. Yeah. I'm gonna go with that So right. it comes in two sizes. We have uh, one size that's like one inch. Oh, it's so cute. And then one size that's like, oh my god, so big. So this is like 80 millimeter by 80 millimeter. This is 25 by 25. It's one inch wide, one inch, and like three inch by three inch or whatever. And then um, you cut out a piece, as you can see, and you stick it onto the bottom here, and then. When you're ready to go, you just uh, peel the bottom part off. You just peel and peel go. Peel and stick. I'm not going to stick, you know, but you, you peel it off and then you stick it. And then... Uh-oh. Oh, sorry. Oh, back. And then uh, it, it basically provides a, an excellent uh, thermal uh, conductivity, but not electrical conductivity. And it's very thin, so you get, um, like, a really good connection. And also it's even. Mm -hmm. So unlike with glues or paste, it, you know, which are often uneven, so you don't get very good... Um, you get bubbles and stuff. This is like nice and flat, and you squish it, and it's like perfect. Anyways, uh, check the web page for it. The data sheet on it. It's uh, the 3M8810. Okay. Great stuff. I don't know. Good. Uh, good if you want to use our heat sinks. People were asking for it because our heat sinks. Uh, they're excellent. Okay. But they don't come with Next up. thermal tape. Look at these buttons. This is another amazing photo. Look at this photo. Skinny buttons. Look at this. I'm gonna go through these photos. Skinny, right. skinny buttons. Yeah, these are these are six millimeter by three and a half millimeter buttons. They're extra skinny, so these are um, handy when you just you actually need a lot of buttons on a breadboard. And the other ones are a little bit big. You need to kind of like be able to get these with your fingernails. Yeah. But um, I do like them. They also work great in perf boards. Um, but you can see how nicely they uh, set up here. Also, thanks to Phil for setting up this awesome Elmo and lighting. Look at how. Great as I can show off this stuff. See, this looks good. This looks really good. It only took me a little took me four while. years. But anyways, yeah. we did it. We're winners. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you can connect these buttons up uh, either way, but they're really skinny, so you can fit a lot of them. And then, um, yeah, just in every other hole of a breadboard, perf board, whatever. And uh, they can, they're basically like any other switch. You can do a couple milliamps through them. They're not power switches, but yeah. nice and clicky. Okay, maybe you'll... Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, they're clicky. They're nice and clicky. Okay. I can hear them. All right. Uh, next up, this completely sold out, so sign up for it. It's not in stock. Sorry. But the Arduino Yoon is here. We sold them all. There was none left. So here's the Yoon. Here's a couple Yun. photos. Yoon. Yun. Yoon. And uh, here we go. Not Yoon. It's Yoon. Yeah. Uptown. Okay. So this is the Yoon, and this is like the only one we have. Yeah, that's it. We sold out instantly. Um, and the Yen is uh, kind of neat. There is an Ethernet jack here. Maybe I'll back this up a little bit. Well, I gotta uh, figure out how to, how to handle like big things. Um, so there's an Ethernet jack, and then there's a, an Atmega 32U4, so it's like a Leonardo, and there's a micro jack, and then there's a USB host port, which goes to Linux computer underneath here. There's a little uh, like ICSP uh, antenna, and it looks like maybe some sort of other external antenna option. Um, they have these nice stickers on the side now. You can see, so you can. Yeah, it's a good idea. Kind of idea. Yeah. Um, so you can see all the analog pins and stuff, and then on the bottom there's a micro SD card, which means you can use a storage. More chips and stuff. I don't actually know. I I just opened this, so I don't know exactly where everything is. And then this big can, and this can is where the Linux computer is underneath. So this is um, an interesting mix of uh, a, basically a Wi-Fi router, essentially. The ch same chips that are in Wi-Fi routers, the little yeah. mini ones. 
Ed and Arduino chip, and they're tied together over a serial port, over the serial port, I guess pins uh, zero and one. And uh, there's a library to interface them. So this is another alternative for if you want to do Wi-Fi, because it's built in Wi-Fi, and it also does Ethernet. Um, and there, you can SSH into the Linux machine, I guess, somehow. I'm not 100% yeah. sure. There's an IP address and everything. And then, uh, I think it's called, uh, oh, what is the name of the company that does Dog Hunter or what? No, Dog Hunter did the, they did this. the help to design. But then yeah. there's this other one. Um, it's not Tambu. Tambu. Yeah. Yeah, so Tambu is there's kind of like a cloud service yeah. that... Like, let's say if you wanted to have this tweet and post to or Facebook and Gmail. do... Yeah, it, yeah it, it, it handles all the API stuff for you. So we haven't had a chance to play with this. We only got these on Friday or something. But um, it sounds really interesting. I'd like to check it out. Um, again, uh, a lot of people ask, so what's the difference between this and the Electric Amp and, like, a CC3000? This is very powerful because it, like, it has a Linux computer inside yeah. of it. Basically, it's like a mix of a Raspberry Pi speed... Or maybe yeah. not in Raspberry it, Pi, but it's a little bit less than that, but it's still Yeah, it's fairly... powerful, and like the Raspberry Pi, it, it takes a lot of power. It takes it's a lot not, of power. It's not going to be a portable project, this is really. Not a, yeah, this is not a portable project thing. Like, you can't really solar power it. I don't know that you can... It you know, takes a while to set up and, and tear down the, 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 the... I mean, not tear down, but um, to boot up and shut down. Yeah. So this is good for, like, standalone projects. You can plug it into power and uh, settle it. Although it doesn't have a DC jack anymore, so you would power this through... Um, Maybe a USB uh, wall adapter yeah. instead of a DC jack. That's another trade-off. So, um, but it, it's interesting. It's, it seems really powerful, and uh, it'll be. It, we need yeah. to see what. Because with a USB port, you know, you can actually connect like a sound card, or you can connect a USB key, yeah. or whatever you want. So um, as people do more with this processor, we'll also take this can off and get some photos yeah. of what's underneath there, because that'd be interesting to see. Okay, we yeah. better. Yeah, we better speed it up a little bit. We went along. Yeah, so we get through these. Yeah, but this was um, the most exciting thing. Yeah. All right, um, we got the Thames and Cosmos electronic kit. Uh, we looked at this for a while, and we decided to pick it up. Um, I'll grab this here. Yeah, it's a it's a kind of a solderless plug and play. Yeah. So uh, you know, transistors, LEDs type learning kit. We so, really like the design, though. I yeah. So um, we know these folks. Um, I talked to them a bunch of times over the years. Um, here it is. Uh, it's for ages um, eight and up. There's 21 experiments. There's a really nice manual, and there is a lot of um, places that you, that sell these types of things. And um, I'll just say this: um, it's made in Germany, and when something's made in Germany, it's usually really good. And this yeah. is the case. There's a lot of cheap, crappy um, electronic, you know, all-in-one kits and yeah. everything. You can get these anywhere, but we decided mm -hmm. only to carry one. This is the one that we think is really good. I also good. like that it, it has kind of like a breadboard style. Yeah. So it's actually much more, I don't say like realistic, but it, yeah. it's, it's, it's not as, like when you snap circuits, I think it, you don't get that feel of like wiring stuff up. This is actually, it's basically just a basic breadboard, but it's a little easier to see what's going on with the connections. Yeah. Okay, next up. Um, we finally got these in. Yeah, sorry it took me so and long. And check this out, I got an animated GIF. Boop. Boop. And then I got some pictures. John took these pictures. These are nice pictures. Um, one of my favorite projects out there in the world is the little uh, knock knock thing where you, you have a, a knock that you do. Yeah. And then it, um, if, if you do the right knock, it'll uh, open up the door. So here you go. OK, so this is, yeah, this is a solenoid. And it's a special solenoid. I'll turn it on over here. When you power it. Um, it's a pulse solenoid, so the slug goes in, you know, turn off the power. When there's no power, it's uh, springy. So this makes it excellent for um, making some sort of lock mechanism. It's actually, these are used in safes and cabinets. And um, I don't think we have time, but if you undo these screws and you remove a little um, C-pin, you can twist this part around. So this, this guy, see how it's like the slant is this way? But depending on how you mount it, you may want the slant in any of other the other 90 degree angles. So you can open it up and, and change that around. It just comes to us this way. And I uh, give it 12 volts, about 500 milliamps. And uh, you can make your own lock. And I like how it has these nice big mounting tabs. Really easy. Hey, 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 no, no. OK. Can the plunger be rotated? Yeah, that's what I just said. Yes. OK, great. Next up. Turn it off. Put it away. Yeah. Yeah, make sure it's turned off. It's off. I'm going to really make sure it's turned off. 
Let's keep. I know electronics here. I know you do. Let's keep going. Okay. Noodle cable. Noodle cable. Yeah. Here's a nice photo. And uh, we also cut it in half so you can see. Yeah. Pretty good. I'll show you. This is really fast. Good wires in here. All right. These are fun. These are really popular. I'm starting to see these in products. They're like super skinny little USB cables. Yeah, they don't tangle up as they much They don't either. tangle up yeah. as easily, and they're kind of cute, and I don't know. They come in Adafruit black, and they're very slimming, and they look like linguine, and uh, yeah. they're a lot lighter, and they take up a lot of space. Okay, moving right along. We got other cables, you know. Okay. I don't know if you knew that. Here they are. It's just like three-in-one thing. You got this three-in-one cable. We have a three-in-one cable because we actually used to have a cable like this for the Minty Boost, and then like oh. it, the company like discontinued. And the cables weren't very good either, and uh, these are a lot better. And this is charging. This is a charging and data cable. And data. Explain. I will Both. explain in a moment. Whoa. Moment okay. How it works. So this cable, it's a three-in-one cable. Whoa. Yeah. Other camera. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm going there. So this is a three-in-one cable. So uh, you have USB here. So this is your standard USB connector. And then on the other end, you have three ends. You've got your classic um, iPod and early iPad and iPhone 30 pin, so standard iDevice 30 pin. You have a micro USB, also very standard. Almost every other phone uses uh, micro USB. And Lightning, which is like the iPhone 5, iPad 3 connector. Um, and uh, to be clear, you, you should only charge one device at a time with these. Again, these are meant for charging. The iPod and the micro USB cables are charging only. Only the power and ground lines are connected. The data lines are not connected on the inside. I opened one up and I verified. However, the lightning cable does have data connected to it. So you can use this to do data transfer with your iPad 3 or your iPhone 5, but it's only for charging on anything with micro USB or, or iPod 30 pin. Yeah, okay. Let's keep moving. All right, uh, this next one is a coming soon. Um, this is the Raspberry Pi hub. Uh, we have one. This is one. Uh, from our friends at Pi Maroni. Um, they sent us one. We're going to be stocking. I think we're going to be like one of the first and only uh, US retailers to have this. So here it is. It's a little uh, Raspberry Pi hub. Oh, it's a noodle cable. Yeah, a little Raspberry Pi hub. Uh, it's beep, so beep. cute. It's yeah. a four port hub. Uh, there's four ports. It's a sample. Yeah. Um, it looks lovely. Uh, one port can do one amp or more, and the other three are just kind of standard 500 milliamp. It's a it's a USB 2 hub, so it works great with video devices yeah. and such. And uh, there's the USB in, and then there's uh, it has a 2.5 millimeter jack, and it comes with a um, nice uh, USB uh, power adapter, wall adapter for yeah. use as well. So we don't have that yet. They're still working on getting the whole shipment to us. Uh, like 5 volt 2 amps. And 10% of the sales of this go to um, the Pi Foundation. The Pi Foundation. That's really cool. Logo. Yeah. Okay. Next up, we're going to keep moving along, Lady Ada. We're going to wrap so the show up. Got to wrap this up. Got to gotta wrap it up. But we got these Otter cases that just came in. These are just an update of the Otter 2000. The Otter 2000 was discontinued, and now they have uh, this Otter 40. I don't know. It's basically the same thing. But it's got these rubber things on the inside that kind of cushion a little bit, and it's got more mounting grip type stuff. Yeah. It's an upgrade. It's a much nicer case. Um, we don't have CAD files for it, though. So, yeah. You're, you know, get one to see if stuff will fit in there. Still it's based in the same completely size. made out of otters. Yes. Yeah. Okay. They squeeze otters yeah. to make this box. And then next up, the, uh, the I think maybe besides the Yoon, uh, this is. Uh, the, the star of the, the new star. product night. Uh, say hello to Gemma. Yes. This it is. It only took me eight months, but. This, this is Gemma. I got it out. We announced this in January, and Gemma What's is funny now is shipping. What's funny Gemma came before Trinket, but I still finished the Trinket before yeah. the Gemma. And just to um, show folks, uh, Flora is. Uh, on the left. On the left, it's the larger one. Then there's Gemma, and then there's Trinket. And this is all part of our platforms that we put out there and like to see people do cool and amazing stuff. So uh, what yeah. is this Gemma thing? What chip does it use? What is it cool about it? Gemma is basically, we wanted to make a very low cost, very low power, um, wearable, sewable platform. So the floor is very powerful. It can do a lot. Uh, and we have a lot of sensors and projects for it, but we wanted something that was small enough that would be you could run off a small battery for a very long time, 
I mean, it wasn't as, as intense and powerful, couldn't do as much, but for a lot of people's projects, just want, like, I want some LEDs to light up, or maybe yeah. I want it to just beep or blink something, something very simple, like, um, for example, uh, Becky, uh, yeah. on Friday, I gave her a you bunch of... You can turn of, the overhead lights off, and uh, these are yeah. earrings, actually. Hold on, let me... i got to plug the power in. So this is... Uh, she made these earrings, and so, like, this is something that you couldn't do if you didn't have something really small. Yeah. So, uh, lift. Moving the overhead, I can show it off. Yeah. Whoa. Nope, that's not. Oh, right. look at that, though. Hey, look yeah. at that. <laughs> uh, that's not what I want to do. But uh, so you can see the LEDs. How Actually, I... you know what? This is. You yeah. know what? Go, b go back to that because if you put the light on in the background, it actually makes it so you can see the LEDs. Do that again. No, you can see them now. Yeah, but do that again. Okay, hold on. And we're just trying to figure out is there like a, an awesome that's way? The no, top next light. one, yeah. And then. There, that's the bottom light. That's kind of weird. Yeah, you can see the individual yeah. ones. Ah. You can see like the chip inside. Yeah. This one, this one's like dying. Oh no, it's just really dim. Um, yeah. Okay. Anyways, so uh, yeah, I don't know why the blue is. Oh, she programmed in, but she, she. This is um, yeah, these basically little earrings that she made, and they have a Gemma on the inside, and then NeoPixel ring, and then a little battery on the back, and this is. Um, something that can run for a couple hours. It's really small. It's really simple. It's basically the same as the uh, the code that Phil B wrote for the goggles. Binary mode. So you can change the colors and reprogram it um, over USB. And it's not, again, it's not as, as powerful as the Flora, but that's okay for something as simple as this, a simple project. Um, it's only $8 and it uses, you know, a lot less power. Yeah. So it's, it's really good for little projects. Also, like, a Flora is something that you know, it's like something that you, you might hesitate to embed permanently into a project because you're like, oh, once it's embedded, you have to get another floor. This one, with Gemma, it's not as big of a deal because, again, it's so small and low cost that you yeah. can dedicate one to each earring, and it's like, cool, not a problem. Yeah. I like that effect with the, 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 the white behind it because what it does is it makes the LEDs not as, uh, doesn't blow out the camera yeah. as much. So okay. it's not a, yeah. yeah it's kind of weird. Anyway, so that's the uh, yeah. It's about um, it's about an inch in diameter. Yeah. And it uses the AT Tiny eighty five, and it's basically the same as a trinket, but round. So it has uh, a USB bootloader, so you can program it over the Arduino IDE. It works really well. It has three I/O pins, but you can do a lot with three I/O pins. Again, you can do it with NeoPixels. We'll probably try to get it running some of our sensors as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's uh, that's new products, Lady Ada. Good work. Yeah.